Hey guys, welcome back to another FX Layouts tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to use DIYLC, at least how I use it. Uh, this is the program that I use to make pretty much every layout that's on the FX Layouts blog. Um, it's uh, a freeware program, if you don't know what it is, it's a freeware program based in Java that you can download off of uh, GitHub. It's made by Bansika or Ben Kika? I don't know. This guy, uh, he's done this for a while. It's several versions. This is the third very uh, third version of it. And the fortieth subversion is the most recent one. I uh, am currently using uh, three point two eight because of a couple of little minor quirks that haven't um, been updated along the way, and this one still doesn't. But we'll get into that later. Um, you can still go back and get. Uh, 3.28, you have to scroll a bit, but it's back there, I promise. A lot of my components I have changed from the defaults, pretty much everything probably but resistors. Um, so uh, I'm in the description below, there'll be a link to, um, no, and there'll be a link to this file, um, which is not everything, but pretty much everything. Um, that I use uh, with different colors for the different traces on the PCB side of the layout, um, different sizes of electrolytic, uh, electrolytic caps and film caps, uh, and the different resistors. Uh, the LDR is just a different colored cap. <laughs> uh, and in the newer versions of DIYLC, there's actually a new variation of the diode that is germanium. I just have changed different colors. Uh, in the old version um, yeah so you can get that um, in the description below just click on the link um, new so what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through and actually make a layout that will be published on the blog probably on the same day I publish this video uh, and my one of my favorite circuit creators, if you will, is uh, is runoff groove. And one of the circuits I haven't done is the Uno, which is a FET or JFET adaption of the Boogie Mark I uh, amp, made famous by Carlos Santana, uh, among other great players over the years. So this is a schematic we're going to be using. Um, in DIYLC, the grid by default is set at one-tenth of an inch. Uh, that's pretty standard, um, especially with perf board and vero board. Uh, the holes are generally one-tenth of an inch apart. Uh, for the PCB side, when we get to that, um, I will reduce the, the grid size down by half to 0 0.05 inches, um, just so I can fine tune traces and whatnot. So let's take a look at the schematic again. Uh, we see there are four JFET transistors, um, a three band EQ there in the middle, uh, a gain control or volume in this it was what they're calling it uh, at the big after the first transistor in that first stage uh, that's really more like a gain and then a master volume at the output um, and with a layout you have to think of a couple things before you start laying them out first of all do you want pots board mounted or do you want them uh, wired off the board uh, what size enclosure do you want to put it in um, you know me, I do not like off-board wiring, uh, so I'm definitely going to be attempting uh, to board mount all these pots. Uh, and as far as enclosure size, I typically try to keep the size down to a to fit in a 1590B. Um, I also like 125Bs so I can do top-mounted jacks, but if it's going to fit in a 1590B, it'll fit just fine in 125B. So that's a lot of numbers with the letter B at the end. But let's uh, get going, looking at how we're going to lay this thing out. So we have five pots. Um, you'll notice the pots, each lug is two tenths of an inch apart. So we are going to put down some pads to correspond to that. And cool. So with the typical right angle uh, PCB mount pots from Alpha, um, <clears throat> the distance between the center of the pot and the uh, connection on the board is a little over I think six tenths of an inch um, so the model in DIYLC doesn't really reflect that kind that style of pot um, so you have to back off the pot two tenths of an inch from your pads 
just to get the spacing right because we're going to try to do a row of pots up at the top that are going to be the EQ, uh, bass, middle, and treble, and then the volume and gain controls on a, a level or a line below that. So when, that's important to know when laying out our second row because otherwise you could end up with them here and then it really won't work when you are trying to solder things together. So let's put the second row, eh, we'll call it right there. Yeah, so that should be plenty of room for the uh, pot lugs of this pot to clear the back of this one down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Then I can just copy this. Um, and paste them as so. All right, now let's pull up the schematic again. You can start from a couple different places, the most obvious being the input. But since we have a specific layout in mind for the pots, uh, it doesn't always work well to start there. That is a good place to start um, if you're just starting out and aren't worried about board mounted pots or anything. Um, for a more simple circuit, that's a good place to start, especially if you're just beginning in um, creating layouts. Uh, we could start uh, in the middle with the EQ section, uh, since that's kind of funky, especially since we're going to have to reorganize things to keep the mid pot in the middle um, instead of off on the end. Uh, or we can start on the output uh, and work our way backwards. I think for this one I'm going to start at the output and work backwards. That way the volume pot would be this one, uh, the EQ's up here, and we work our way around to the gain and the input section over here. So let's uh, move this over so we can see the schematic a little bit. Uh, we, if we're starting the output, okay, first things first, lug one of the master pot goes to ground. So we need to establish where the ground plane is going to be, our traces. Uh, and I normally have the ground go around the perimeter. And if you're looking at a pot backwards, since that's what we're doing, since this is going to be lug three, uh, lug three, two, one, one to ground. All right. So the circuit comes into the volume pot or master pot at lug three over here, and that's a 3.3 N capacitor to ground. So let's go ahead, put that in, 3.3 N. Oh, and since it's smaller, let's make it a little narrower. Cool. And we can connect that to lug three. And since it's gotta go to ground, right there. Next is a 15 K resistor. And that's going straight off of lug three as well. And then we can rearrange our traces and clean things up a little bit. Uh, now I like to, I kind of edit as I go. Um, and seeing that there's gonna be another three, 3.3 end cap, and another 15K resistor all here and we're very quickly going to run out of room before we hit uh, one of the EQ pots here. I'm going to try to save a row and pull this down here. And yeah, because we've got two JFET stages to go through before we hit, which will probably be the treble pot here. So try to leave yourself as much space. Then you can always rearrange. Um, to fit that better. So we have another 3 n or 3.3 end cap here. We can just copy and paste. Um, you can rotate components either by right clicking on them or using Alt and one of the arrow keys left or right and then we can put that there. So this connects to these two. Um, let's put it here and connect a ground up there. Cool. So we have next a 15 end cap, which we can put right there, 15 N. 
Now that also that all goes into the drain, which is this connection of the of Q4 here. And also going into drain four or the drain of Q4 is this big 100k trim pot, which is kind of big, and there's going to be four of them, one for each JFET stage. So um, since ground goes all the way around the circuit, probably. Uh, we need to have power more central. Um, so the trimmers are probably all going to end up more in the middle. Hopefully that's going to be the easiest way. Um, this is our JFET. With the J201, which is what the UNO uses for all four, um, you can probably use 2N5457s or 58s if you don't have 201s on hand. Um, the way the pinout for that works. Let's rotate this. Um, is in this orient in this orientation is gate source drain. Those are the three pins right there. And what we want to do is connect the gate to this capacitor, but also to this trimmer somehow. Um, so let's modify things a little. Let's, as I said, I like to edit as I go. So I'm going to scoot this around. This will connect over here. And that gives us that connection there. So the gate, or the drain, can be here, I think. And this is going to be more like there. So we also have the gate and source connections to make as well. Off the source, there's this 820 ohm resistor and 22 uh, microfarad capacitor. And then off the gate, there's a 220K resistor. So we'll start with the source. That's 820 ohm. And 220. Oops. Cool. Ah, I realized something. Circuit has to have an output, right? Let's take care of that. We'll put that here for now. Make that pad. Great. So the ground is going to come around the corner here. Like that. And these gotta have to are gonna have to connect to ground as well. So I'm gonna just move them down a little bit so they're not right underneath that transistor and make that connection. Okay, so we still have this capacitor to put here in parallel with this 820 ohm capac uh, resistor. So we'll put that to the left of that. and start making this connection. It just goes like so. Pull that one down. And then connect the cap to ground. Great. So this is starting to take shape. We still have this to deal with. Um, I don't want to put it up here because like I said earlier, we're going to run out of room for the second JFET stage. And we want to keep the power all over it more in the middle. Um, that's kind of close. You can see it's kind of touching the, uh, transistor, uh, the JFET there. But generally, they're, these are give a little more space than what you actually need. Um, so I'm going to put that there. And you can see pins 2 and one of the trimmer are jumpered and that's what connects to the gate so we can run it that'd be pin one and pin two pin three right there we can run this over here and connect it that way but we still have this 3.3 mega ohm and 10 picofarad capacitor to connect to the gate so let's do that before we try to connect the trimmer. 
put the 3.3 mega ohm resistor there and for anything generally anything under one nanofarad I use a ceramic cap um, at least the the visual representation of a ceramic cap all right there's our 10 P cap and that's gonna what's that's gonna be what goes into uh, the drain of Q3 here but it still has a 47 nanofarad cap to go through but we'll get there so now we've made there's a way to get the drain connected to here we can go through that and this is going to be connected like so now after this 10p and 3.3 meg parallel array we have a 47n resistor uh, these are a little bigger than this like 15n size um, so I'm going to put this here they do span they can span three to four um, depending on what you have but generally they're they span um, two tenths of an inch um, but they're a little bigger so we're gonna make that three tenths of an inch wide 47 n right cool now and put it here, or let's leave it right here. Um, these two meet up like that, right? Right. And that leads us into Q3. We now I need to put the drain, connect that to this trimmer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just edit this as we go pull that up put these back and we'll connect that in a second because we have another one of these for Q3 so I'm gonna go ahead and copy it and paste it right there um, I'm gonna bump these over one it's a little tight, but there should be enough room, um, especially if you use the smaller flat trimmers. It shouldn't be a problem. And then this can go into here, which this is, that's pin one. So we'll do that. And then connect it. Like so. And then pin three will get voltage, which will probably be over there somewhere. Mm -hmm.